the River Trading Post Pod Network. Here we'll bring you interesting tips, tidbits, information, discussions, and music, and just about everything else of interest to collectors of fine Native American art. The River Trading Post Pod Network is brought to you by River Trading Post. Be sure to drop in and visit with us in Santa Fe, Scottsdale, or Chicagoland. And of course, you can visit with us anytime at RiverTradingPost.com. The historic Twadalina Trading Post has been around for over 100 years. During that time, it became a center for Navajo trading and a very favorite social place for the Navajo people. In 1997, trader Mark Winter took over the old trading post and began the revitalization of exceptional weaving in the area. Known for the fabulous Two Gray Hills weavings, Twadalina Trading Post supports nearly 125 of today's very top Navajo weavers. River Trading Post is joined with Mark Winter in the Twadalina Trading Post and featuring exceptional collections of fine Two Gray Hills weavings in our Scottsdale Gallery. This program will give you some insights into the historic trading post through a compilation of clips including a wonderful short film by Jane Ginn that you are sure to enjoy. I'm originally from Twisado, uh, Sanaste, New Mexico, and um, I'm here to ask you some questions about about yourself, and then about your about the sheep, mm-hmm. and then about you, about the land, and also your family, the origin of your father, and how it came to you. Mm-hmm. So tell me a little bit. Um, my name's Irene Benali, and my I've been born and raised here. And the the name of the land here is Yellow Clay Springs. And I've been I started back in 1995 mm. when I first came out here with this. Um, I was chubby. <laughs> I, I was a. Uh, I lived in town, raised my kids in town. And when my dad says, do you want the permit? And I says, sure, why not? Yes, you know. So I had the paperwork transferred, and I brought my bedroll and a few items out here to live with my dad. And he started telling me how how the raising sheep is actually doing it. Mm -hmm. Every day, letting out the sheep, waking up early. And then at the same time, he was an elderly guy. He's an old man, so I had to take care of him at the same time. 
and then his teaching, he's passing that down. And it was kind of hard for me from the start. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of Navajo words I didn't understand. I always tell him not never to mistreat animals, mm -hmm. and I always bring that on to to people, and especially the young people that were their prayers that are set down for them, and then their songs, Navajo songs that are there. Mm -hmm. So that that is another teaching that I really stress to the to the young people, mm -hmm. and I gave it to Mel Weaver, and he this is what he came up with. Mm -hmm. So this is some of the weavings that we do. A lot of girls, you know, they want it for graduations. Mm -hmm. They want it for graduations or ladies that are brides. They use it for weddings. I figured, I said, I better have one before I get too old. <laughs> <laughs> I purchased the post in 1997. Um, he actually got it from R.B. Fouts, who was the original one of the old traders here. He's been here for a long time. The, tra the post was kind of not really in operation so much around 97, and so then his, his main goal coming out here was trying to get the rugs and getting the weavers and everything back into what they were doing. Because when he first came out here, there was just a real small handful of weavers. And in the 12 years he's been here, he's purchased close to 4,500 rugs from over 300 different weavers. And so it's really kind of shown how much he's kind of, the involvement in the rugs and everything like that. So we still do credit with all the local people. We have a great big old credit book back here that has a bunch of people's names and everything. And we'll loan them money and give them groceries. And then when they get done with the rug, they pay off their bill. And if they didn't charge too much or borrow too much, then they get some extra some money on top of it as well. And we've had great rugs come in. So we have a very big old rug room back here and right. all kinds of really good stuff. So I'll kind of show you around and let you kind of get an idea on how everything works and operates. Sure. Brother Blind Man, and then where that family ends up going. And then you see Mrs. Police Boy and all the kids that Sagebrush Hill Woman had. And then Mrs. Police Boy's children all the way down. So we're basically, we're standing in this third generation right here with Mary Yana McCurley, Mary Police, who is here, Marie Police Claw, which is right around the corner here, Lillian Police Hosky, Fanny Hosky, and... Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we have 
mostly frozen meats, really important to the Navajo people is mutton, which is lamb. And so they frequently buy lamb, mutton liver, mutton for stew. Um, this is a specialty food that is made from intestines of lambs, and this is a really highly regarded specialty food. Very different, but they love this. It's very expensive. And for the Navajo, they have a saying, sheep is life. And they use every bit of the sheep from the inside out. So when they butcher a lamb after they've used its wool and it's too old, then they start to use it for food. And so that's a big staple of the Navajo diet. We sell a lot of spicy peppers and chilies. People tend to like hot items on their food, and then also a lot of salsa to go with their meat and chips. Um, a very big thing is spam. Okay, we sell a lot of spam in the can. Anything that keeps for a long time in a can is good. So a lot of people don't have electricity or refrigerators, so things that are canned sell really good. And anchovies, believe it or not. A lot of people <laughs> like anchovies, so we sell a lot of anchovies. And, of course, soups, and then a lot of this bluebird flour in big bags. They use this to make fry bread, which is another staple of the diet like mutton is. So we sell a lot of big bags of flour. And these are hot and spicy pickles. They have chilies in them so that they get nice and hot. And then these are just regular dill pickles. And we sell a lot of pickles every day. Of course, everybody loves candy. So we sell a lot of candy and cake mix to make birthday cakes. You don't sell organic food here. No, it doesn't work very well. <laughs> I think that was tried once. <laughs> and, of course, a lot of canned fruits and jelly and instant dinners. You have been listening to a presentation of the River Trading Post Pod Network. Join us again for tips, tidbits, information, discussions, and music, and just about everything else of interest to collectors of Native American art. The River Trading Post Pod Network is brought to you by River Trading Post. If you ever get the chance, drop in and visit with us in Santa Fe, Scottsdale, or Chicagoland. And of course, you can visit us anytime at rivertradingpost.com.